In quantum mechanics, the particle in a box model describes a particle free to move in a small space surrounded by impenetrable barriers. The model is mainly used as a hypothetical example to illustrate the differences between classical and quantum systems. In classical systems, for example a ball trapped inside a large box, the particle can move at any speed within the box and it is no more likely to be found at one position than another. However, when the well becomes very narrow, quantum effects become important. The particle may only occupy certain positive energy levels. Likewise, it can never have zero energy, meaning that the particle can never sit still. Additionally, it is more likely to be found at certain positions than at others, depending on its energy level. The particle may never be detected at certain positions, known as spatial nodes. The particle in a box model provides one of the very few problems in quantum mechanics which can be solved analytically, without approximations. This means that the observable properties of the particle are related to the mass of the particle and the width of the well by simple mathematical expressions. Due to its simplicity, the model allows insight into quantum effects without the need for complicated mathematics. It is one of the first quantum mechanics problems taught in undergraduate physics courses, and it is commonly used as an approximation for more complicated quantum systems. One-dimensional solution. The simplest form of the particle in a box model considers a one-dimensional system. Here, the particle may only move backwards and forwards along a straight line with impenetrable barriers at either end. The walls of a one-dimensional box may be visualized as regions of space with an infinitely large potential energy. Conversely, the interior of the box has a constant, zero potential energy. This means that no forces act upon the particle inside the box and it can move freely in that region. However, infinitely large forces repel the particle if it touches the walls of the box, preventing it from escaping. The potential energy in this model is given as where is the length of the box and is the position of the particle within the box. Wave functions in quantum mechanics the wave function gives the most fundamental description of the behavior of a particle. The measurable properties of the particle may all be derived from the wave function. The wave function can be found by solving the Schrödinger equation for the system where is the reduced Planck constant, is the mass of the particle, is the imaginary unit and is time. Inside the box, no forces act upon the particle, which means that the part of the wave function inside the box oscillates through space and time with the same form as a free particle, where in are arbitrary complex numbers. The frequency of the oscillations through space and time are given by the wave number and the angular frequency respectively. These are both related to the total energy of the particle by the expression which is known as the dispersion relation for a free particle. Here one must notice that now, since the particle is not entirely free but under the influence of a potential, the energy of the particle given above is not the same thing as where p is the momentum of the particle, and thus the wave number k above actually describes the energy states of the particle, not the momentum states. In this sense, it is quite dangerous to call the number k a wave number, since it is not related to momentum like wave number usually is. The rationale for calling k the wave number is that it enumerates the number of crests that the wave function has inside the box, and in this sense it is a wave number. This discrepancy can be seen more clearly below. When we find out that the energy spectrum of the particle is discrete but the momentum spectrum is continuous and in particular, the relation for the energy and momentum of the particle does not hold. As said above, the reason this relation between energy and momentum does not hold is that the particle is not free. But there is a potential V in the system, and the energy of the particle is where T is the kinetic and V the potential energy. The size of the wave function at a given position is related to the probability of finding a particle thereby. The wave function must therefore vanish everywhere beyond the edges of the box. Also, the amplitude of the wave function may not jump abruptly from one point to the next. 
These two conditions are only satisfied by wave functions with the form where is a positive integer. Usually in quantum mechanics it is also demanded that the derivative of the wave function in addition to the wave function itself be continuous. Here, this demand would lead to the only solution being the constant zero function, which is not what we desire, so we give up to this demand. Note that giving up this demand means that the wave function is not a differentiable function at the boundary of the box, and thus it can be said that the wave function does not solve the Schrödinger equation at the boundary points and the wave number above is restricted to certain specific values given by where is the size of the box. Negative values of a neglected, since they give wave functions identical to the positive solutions except for a physically unimportant sign change. Here one sees that only a discrete set of energy values and wave numbers k are allowed for the particle. Finally, the unknown constant may be found by normalizing the wave function so that the total probability density of finding the particle in the system is 1. It follows that thus, a may be any complex number with absolute value square root. These different values of a yield the same physical state. So a equals square root can be selected to simplify. The above solution is for the specific case of a box situated between in. It's expected that the eigenvalues, i.e., the energy of the box should be the same regardless of its position in space, but changes. This is represented by a more general case of where is the initial position. Notice that represents a phase shift in the wave function and simplifies to the above case when, also, the phase shift has no effect when solving the Schrödinger equation, thus not affecting the eigenvalue. The momentum wave function is proportional to the Fourier transform of the position wave function. With them, here one sees that the momentum spectrum is continuous, and one can conclude that for energy state described by the wave number, the momentum can, when measured, attain also other values than, although these are the most likely, momentum values. Hence one also sees that since the energy is the relation does not necessarily hold, here P is the measured momentum above, it has no well-defined momentum before measurement. Position and momentum in classical physics, the particle can be detected anywhere in the box with equal probability. In quantum mechanics, however, the probability density for finding a particle at a given position is derived from the wave function as for the particle in a box. The probability density for finding the particle at a given position depends upon its state, and is given by thus. For any value of n greater than 1, there are regions within the box for which, indicating that spatial nodes exist at which the particle cannot be found. In quantum mechanics, the average, or expectation value of the position of a particle is given by for the steady state particle in a box. It can be shown that the average position is always, regardless of the state of the particle. For a superposition of states, the expectation value of the position will change based on the cross term which is proportional to the variance in the position as a measure of the uncertainty in position of the particle. The probability density for finding a particle with a given momentum is derived from the wave function as as with position, the probability density for finding the particle at a given momentum depends upon its state, and is given by where, again. The expectation value for the momentum is then calculated to be zero, and the variance in the momentum is calculated to be. The uncertainties in position and momentum are defined as being equal to the square root of their respective variances, so that this product increases with increasing n, having a minimum value for n equals 1. The value of this product for n equals 1 is about equal to 0.568 which obeys the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which states that the product will be greater than or equal to energy levels. The energies which correspond with each of the permitted wave numbers may be written as the energy levels increase with meaning that high energy levels are separated from each other by a greater amount and low energy levels are. The lowest possible energy for the particle is found in state 1, which is given by the particle, therefore, always has a positive energy. 
This contrasts with classical systems, where the particle can have zero energy by resting motionlessly. This can be explained in terms of the uncertainty principle, which states that the products of the uncertainties in the position and momentum of a particle is limited by it can be shown that the uncertainty in the position of the particle is proportional to the width of the box. Thus, the uncertainty in momentum is roughly inversely proportional to the width of the box. The kinetic energy of a particle is given by, and hence the minimum kinetic energy of the particle in a box is inversely proportional to the mass and the square of the well width, in qualitative agreement with the calculation above. Higher dimensional boxes Using a similar approach to that of the one-dimensional box, it can be shown that the wave functions and energies are given respectively by, where the two-dimensional wave vector is given by. For a three-dimensional box, the solutions are, where the three-dimensional wave vector is given by. In general for an n-dimensional box, the solutions are an interesting feature of the above solutions is that when two or more of the lengths are the same, there are multiple wave functions corresponding to the same total energy. For example the wave function with has the same energy as the wave function with. This situation is called degeneracy and for the case where exactly two degenerate wave functions have the same energy that energy level is said to be doubly degenerate. Degeneracy results from symmetry in the system. For the above case two are of the length so equal so the system is symmetric with respect to a 90 degrees rotation. Applications Because of its mathematical simplicity, the particle in a box model is used to find approximate solutions for more complex physical systems in which a particle is trapped in a narrow region of low electric potential between two high potential barriers. These quantum well systems are particularly important in optoelectronics and are used in devices such as the quantum well laser, the quantum well infrared photodetector and the quantum confined Stark effect modulator. It is also used to model a lattice in the chronique penny model and for a finite metal with the free electron approximation. Relativistic effects the probability density does not go to zero at the nodes if relativistic effects are taken into account. Bibliography Bransden, H. Joe Chain, J. Quantum Mechanics, Essex, Pearson Education, ISBN 0-582-35691-1, Davies, John H. The Physics of Low-Dimensional Semiconductors, An Introduction. Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-48491-X, Griffiths, David J., Introduction to Quantum Mechanics, Prentos Hall, ISBN 0-13-111892-7.